I want you to look at about three people and say, it's going to be all right because the doctor is in the house. Tell somebody else, I don't know what you've been going through, but I'm here to let you know the doctor is in the house. Amen. Yeah, come on now. Come on. Come on up in here. I know you've been struggling, but it's time for you to dry up your tears and start celebrating because the doctor is here on your behalf. Hallelujah. Yeah, the struggle is real. Struggles of life is real. And sometimes life is just plain hard, just plain difficult. It gets tough and you get tired of all of the jabs and the punches coming at you. But you maintain your ground. And right now you might be experiencing something unusual. A shake up that you didn't expect. And, and you've been facing every attack of the enemy. You stood your ground and the whole time you're desperately praying to God to give me an answer, God. Tell me what I need to do. I just want you to know that while you're dealing with all of this, he's positioning you for your destiny. That's all he's doing. He's just getting you in the right place for your destiny. Somebody say, my destiny awaits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a test. And you just happen to be the student in his classroom. And I want you to know, you might struggle today, but your testimony is going to show up tomorrow. Tell somebody my struggle is today, but my testimony is going to show up tomorrow. Somebody got a testimony up in here. See, everybody don't know what you've been dealing with. Some of y'all kept some secrets to yourself, and that's real good, but God still knew what was going on. You had to hide it because you didn't want everybody knowing you. And sometimes you just didn't, it ain't even worth telling nobody. They can't do anything about it. But God heard you. And one day you're going to have a testimony. And everybody's going to say, I didn't know she was going through that. I didn't know he was dealing with that. And for God to have brought them through this, it had to have been God. Nobody else could do it. The doctor is in the house. God wants to use your testimony. See, be, be careful. Don't, 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 don't get upset about what you're going through. Uh, embrace it. I, I know that's hard, I, I, but you got to know who's standing with you. You're not by yourself. So you embrace what you're going through. Why? Because your testimony, when it comes out, others are going to see his glory. They're going to see his faithfulness. They're going to see his sovereignty and they're going to see his grace manifested in your life. Hear what I said? He's going to use you for his glory, but people are going to see him showing up in your life. And it's going to be like if he did it for her, if he did it for him, he's going to do it for me. Give God a clap praise. Tell somebody, don't you quit. Don't you succumb to it because this is your exodus. You got to understand that you're coming out and you've left your Egypt behind you. Everything that tormented you and everything that brought you down and everything that had you on lockdown is your exodus that you're leaving behind. Tell somebody, this is my exodus. I'm coming out of it. Today, I, I leave it all behind me. Now, if you don't mind, I want you to turn around and that thing that's been plaguing you, kick it. Now, look back to the front and say, it's behind me not to bother me anymore. Yeah. Today, as we recognize breast cancer awareness, I, I want to talk to the people that's been struggling with all manner of diseases and illnesses, emotional distress and, and psychological, psychological issues. And the enemy got you in a bad head spin. Mm -hmm. And you're struggling. 
uh, and from dealing even, even with minor headaches to chronic dangerous diseases. God got a word for you. So this word is going to be for everybody because the, the, the enemy hasn't troubled you yet. One day you will get sick. One day you're going to have some issues. One day you're going to have some problems. Even though you're looking good right now, one day the enemy is going to show up on your doorstep. Well, I want you to know for all those people, whether you're dealing with it right now, have dealt with it, or will deal with it, God got a word for you today. I want you to turn with me to uh, Matthew's, the ninth chapter. And I know God would change this message around so many times. And in, in the past day, I've had three different topics, but I believe this is the right one. Uh, he woke me up four o'clock this morning and I couldn't rest. I, uh, the other night he woke me up, I had to start writing down some stuff. But Matthews, I, I want to begin this lesson, uh, this message today with Matthews beginning at the ninth verse. Uh, I'm sorry, the ninth chapter and the 20th verse. If it's not on the screen, so open up your Bibles, look with somebody or use your phone. Matthews 9, 20. And behold, look, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. I tried to get away from this story. I came up with everything else to use in my message, but God just kept bringing me back to this one. I said, God, they've heard it so many times, but he said, not the way you're going to preach it today. So, but Jesus, somebody said, but Jesus, turn him about. And oh, I'm sorry, 21. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good faith. Thou faith have made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. I want to talk to you today about the great physician. And if I added a subtopic, and the power of his anointing. The great physician and the power of his anointing. One of the most unique healing stories in the Bible is the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. Her story is compelling and her story is powerful. And it's so compelling that it can be found in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You know, that's really powerful if God decides that he want to talk about your testimony in three different chapters. And over the years, countless sermons have been preached about her concerning her troubles and her struggles and her testimony of a miracle. Uh, we don't know a, a lot about her. Uh, the Bible don't even give her a name. But what we do know is that she had a situation. She had a bleeding disorder that had plagued her for 12 long years, 144 months, 626 weeks, 4,380 days. She suffered. Tell somebody she suffered. Not only did she suffer physically, but emotionally. Her disease would not allow her to have the pleasures of life. She was not allowed to marry. She couldn't have her husband. She couldn't go out and nobody could come in. Her family was exiled from her because she was considered ritually unclean. So she had to spend all of her time by herself. What a terrible situation to be in that you're sick unto death and you have nobody that you can lean on. But she had spent all of her money out of desperation for a cure. She had gone through all of the doctors in her phone book. She tried everybody in the city and everybody in the state. And she even called in some specialists from, from other countries. She Googled and she, she pulled up everything she could. And she tried all of the doctors, but nobody could help her. She tried the proven medicine. It didn't help her. 
She even went out and she talked to the quack doctors because she was desperate. And when you are desperate for something, you would do anything that you got to do to get the results. Her health was declining every day. 4,380 days, she was going downhill. Uh, her funds were depleted and she was all by herself. And now, by now, 12 years, her faith had to be under attack. And she was possibly losing hope that she would ever be cured. She was struggling with all of her life, uh, the hardship that her life had dealt her, but she had survived thus far. Somebody say, you got to survive it. Life hardships can make you want to quit. Throw in the towel. But remember, you have survived everything that you went through thus far. So yes, the struggle is real, but so is our God. It's real, but there's a real God that's in the midst. So after battling her condition for 12 years, she decided to try one more time. She heard something in her window. She was probably staring there, staring out the window, wishing she could, she could be outside with the nice fresh air and the birds chirping and everybody walking up and down the street having a good time. But in the midst of sitting there in her loneliness, she heard something. She heard that Jesus was coming to town. So she made up her mind that this day would be the day that she was going to get her healing. And when she shut the door behind her, she had already made up in her mind that when she came back through that door, she was going to be whole. See, she, she made up her mind before she even left out of the house. I'm going to get my healing today. Look at somebody that whatever God got for me, I'm going to get it today. So she, when she returned home, you know everything else that happened. She returned home and tell somebody she had a testimony. And as she relived all of the events that took place that day, she had to say, God is a good God. Uh, she thought about the miracle that had taken place in her life. Sometimes God is working a miracle in our lives and we take him for granted. You take it for granted that you're going to wake up every morning. You take it for granted that you're going to be able to breathe through your nostrils. You take it for get granted that you're going to be able to walk or lift up your hands. But some people are not so lucky. We take God for granted. Well, Jesus wants me to tell you today that he is still in the healing business. Uh, uh, uh. You might say, listen, that happened back then. Uh, how do we even know that this is true? That sounds like a fairy tale. Don't let the enemy fool you. That happened then. So what about now? God want me to let you know that he's still in the miracle working business. He's still in the healing business. And what he did back then, he will do today. Who need a miracle today? So as I was preparing this message, I came across a breast cancer story concerning a woman by the name of Misty Burdett. And it caught my attention. She had been in remission from breast cancer uh, for eight years. And this is on your Facebook. And, and in 2015, it returned with a vengeance. But this time, the doctors was not talking about a cure because there's no known cure for uh, a stage four breast cancer. And after her diagnosis, she endured four years of chemotherapy, drugs that was proven and some that was unproven. The doctors was doing whatever they could not to save her, but to slow down the progression and extend her time. And finally, the doctor, according to Missy, said that they told her it's time to prepare for the inevitable. This is true. She said in October of 2018, her PET scan, did I say that right? Is it a PET scan? PET scan came back absolutely horrible. The cancer had ravaged her body. 
It was everywhere. And it was so many spots in her. She said her body lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, it was in her bones. She was on her way out. And her pastor got in on, the on her story. He said that everybody was praying for her, but she was really struggling through it all. You know, when you got something that serious going on, it don't matter how much prayer you get, how many comforting words or encouragement you get from anybody, you're dealing with something serious. So, yes, you're going to struggle with it. But she was struggling. She was struggling because there was no hope for her. But then she got serious. She got serious with God. She began to read her scriptures and she began building her for faith and she began to give herself more in worship. Church is not church anymore. Church was the place where she was giving herself to God. And then in November of 2018, hear me, Misty says her pastor preached a, a word and he preached a sermon on being thankful for the gifts and the life that God had given you. And he asked, are you truly thankful for all of the gifts and the life that God gave you? And then he asked the people to begin to press in to God a little bit more. Just keep pressing in. And she began to press and press and press until she reached another level of worship. And she began to worship God with all of her heart and with all of her soul, sitting there in her seat, falling apart and struggling. She forgot about herself and she began to worship God. She went so deep into worship that she began to feel an intense movement of the Holy Spirit and everything just stopped. She looked up and from the deepest place in her soul, she began to thank God for her healing. Despite of what the doctor report said, she began to praise God. She began to worship God and she began to thank him for her healing. So when she left out of church, she began telling everybody, my body feels different. God has healed my body. And the same people that was praying for her healing and her deliverance began looking at her like she was crazy. They began to tell her, oh, she's just having a good day. She don't know what she's talking about. But she kept confessing it. My body is healed. God has healed me. So then she had another PET scan in Fe February 2019. And she went in with that same vigor. And she told the doctors, my God has healed my body. Well, she said, if you thought that the church folks gave me a hard time, the doctors looked at her like, are you really crazy? So they go in. And they give her her pet scan. And when he comes out with the results, oh my God, he came out with the results. He was so confused he had to call in another colleague to make sure of what he was looking at. They both looked at her results. Every trace, hear me, every trace of the cancer was gone. All of it. Read it for yourself. Now get this. The doctors were amazed and they were so overcome. They said, you were right. You were healed by a higher power. And we got to admit that Jesus healed your body. Tell me God is not in the miracle working business. Stage four cancer. Preparing her funeral. Her body was all in, wreck, in pain and all messed up. But God came in and gave her a miracle. Not only did her, the spots, the cancer disappear, but her bones began to recalcify. In other words, there was no, where the bones was breaking apart, God start, started rebuilding the bones in her body. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. Tell somebody, if he did it for her, he'll sure God do it for me. Ah. So everybody asked her, what did you do? Where did you go? She said, what I did was I got closer to God. I got serious with God. And she said, I began to press in. I changed my beliefs and I changed the way I worship. 
Her attitude with God changed everything. So I want to let you know, even in October 2021, God can still work out miracles. He's still a healer. And God can still restore you. And God can still make you whole. But not only can he make you whole again, Bishop, but he can give you double for your trouble. He'll give you back double everything that was taken from you because you were sick. In the book of Job, I got to go there. Job was an upstanding, self-righteous man of God. He lost everything that he had in one day. And if that wasn't enough, Satan attacked his health and covered his body with sores and, and boils and till he had to, from his head to his feet, that he sat in the ashes and began to scrape off the sores. And his wife came up and she looked at him and she said, you just need to curse your God and just die. But if you go on over to Job 13, 15, you'll hear what he says. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In other words, he was saying, even if he take me out, I'm going to trust him. He didn't put stipulations on him. He didn't beg him to heal him. He just said, God, I trust you. Even if you take me out, God, I still trust you. Can you trust God like that? And you know what happened. He left it all in God's hands. See, God is the anointed one. And the anointing knows what to do. You don't have to tell the anointing what to do because the anointing has an assignment on this earth and it already knows what to do. It knows where to go. It knows how to travel in you. It knows how to talk to you. It knows how to tell you what to do. So if you look over in chapter 42, God not only restored Job's health, but he gave him double everything that he lost. He gave it back to him twofold. I want to let you know that everything you went through during your moment of anguish and, uh, and distress, God going to give you double for your trouble. Oh yeah, you lost your mind, but he's going to give it back double. You might have lost some finances, but he's going to give it back double. You might have lost some precious things in your life, but God's going to give it back to you double. Ah. So all three of these people Job, the woman with the issue of blood, and Misty Burdock, Burdock had an encounter with God and the power of his anointing. They all met the physician. You're going to say, how did that happen? Because they were in different times. Because he's a God who's in, immortal. He don't travel by time. He's every place at all times. He's in the beginning. He's in the middle and he's in the end. He's immortal, all powerful, all knowing and ever present. And he's so, man, this guy, this God is so bad that he, he's beyond our human comprehension. We can't understand. And he's infinite. And they all came in contact uh, through the Trinity. Who's the Trinity? One God existing in three different people. Sharing one Godhead body. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. John says in 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So, Job met up with God the Father, whom no man had laid eyes upon. The woman with the issue of blood met up with God the Son, Jesus Christ, who was the Word that became flesh. Misty met up with God the Holy Ghost, who was sent and left here on, uh, as a comforter and lives on the inside of us. All three are one, and they all operate together as one. No matter when you need him, he's going to show up, whether he's the Father, whether he's the Son, of whether he's the Holy Ghost. They are all God. Mm. So Jesus had to let the world know after his crucifixion and his resurrection, I'm telling you what God put in my spirit to tell you, that all power, all power, 
all power has been given unto me, not only in heaven, but in earth. Matthew 28, 18 says, not, uh, that's what he said, all power, all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. And not only does Jesus possess the power of the anointing, he is the anointing. He is the anointed one. See, Satan don't want you to understand the power of the anointing that God has given you through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, John, uh, uh, John, let me prove something. John introduces us to this fact when he paves the way for Jesus in Matthew 3, 11. I, he said, baptize you with water under, unto the repentance. He said, but there's one that's going to show up after me that's greater than who I am. He's so great, I'm not even worthy to tie up his shoes. I baptize you with water, but he's coming with a gift. He's going to give you the Holy Ghost, and he's going to give it to you with fire. So you have been given the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't, hey, hey, don't give him a hard time and don't take it from him. This is a gift. Come unto him and give yourself to him. If you really want to be successful, if you really want to have that, uh, 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 the edge over the enemy, you need to come unto Jesus. Jesus gave us the gift, at, uh, the Holy Ghost, as a gift. So let's talk about God and the Holy Ghost. The, uh, the Holy Ghost uh, have to have a place to live. And Jesus said, your body. Jesus said, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. See, the Holy Ghost can't be running around wrapping on the earth, trying to find some place to stay. It's already designated to be on the inside of you. God has already built your apartment or your house or whatever you're staying in to accommodate the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost has to move someplace. Somebody said, come on up in my house. But when the Holy Ghost moves in, he starts cleaning house. Can I say that again? He starts throwing out some stuff. Let me show you. Let's go to Matthews. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, uh, let's go to Matthews and the, uh, make sure I'm right here. Yeah, Matthews. Come on now. Yeah, I'm getting it. Matthew's the third chapter. I'm just giving y'all time to find it since you don't have the screen. Matthew's the third chapter. Beginning at the 11th verse. And then John confirms again that Jesus is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But let's read the rest of it. In verse 12, he said, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. And he's going to burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. When the Holy Ghost moves into your house, he brings the fire with him. And together they start throwing out some stuff. They start cleaning house. And what's left over, the shaft is left over the fire begins to burn it up. An unquenchable fire, which means it can't get enough of the stuff that is burning up. The Holy Ghost will burn up everything with the fire that's in your house that don't need to be there. So that means cancer can't survive in your house. Hear me? When the Holy Ghost come in and he start cleaning house, he start burning up some stuff. Coronavirus can't survive in your house. Heart disease can't survive in your house. Lung disease can't survive in your house. Chronic headaches can't survive in your house. Diabetes can't survive in your house. Uh, 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 AIDS can't survive in your house. Whatever the enemy brings on in your house to try to make you sick and try to take you out, God will burn it up. Every illness that comes against 
issue can't survive in the temple. Why? Because the anointed one lives on the inside of you. You are a container for God. Am I boring anybody? And the Holy Ghost burns out everything that tries to, to, to assume you. You got power that you don't even know you have. While you're waiting on the pastor to pray, you got the power. While you're waiting on everybody else to pray, you got the power. While you're calling all the doctors, you got the power. While you're reading everything on Facebook and YouTube, you got the power. Do this and do that. All you got to do is call on the name of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. And since he's in your house, he's so close that he'll say, what you want? <laughs> Tell somebody he got to be in the house. He got to be in the house. Tell yourself, say, self, you are anointed. Tell yourself, self, you are healed. Tell yourself, self, you are delivered. And you're going to give me a testimony. You're going to give me a testimony. Because when God gets through with the enemy on the inside, there's nothing he can do. He can't even run. He can't even escape because God's going to burn up everything. He can't get away. So tell somebody I'm not living in fear. I'm not troubled. I'm not even concerned because the great physician is in the house. He, he, he's in my house. So right now you, you may be struggling. It's all right. But tomorrow your testimony is coming. You got to understand that the anointed one is the yoke uh, breaker, uh, uh, the burden remover, uh, uh, the deliverance. Say the power is on the inside of me. And God specifically, let me tell you about the anointed one. He anointed Jesus for the purpose of healing people. Uh, uh, that's why he came here. He was anointed to do it. And what he do, he said, greater things than these shall you do. The Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you will not leave you defenseless. The Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you will protect you. The Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you will fight your enemy. When you're too tired and you're too weak to do it, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. And Jesus would come to your rescue. Ah, ah, oh. Third John, the second verse says, Beloved, that's me. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. God wants you blessed. God wants your soul to prosper. God wants you to be in good health. God wants you to prosper. God wants good things for you. He created you to be a fighter. He created you to be a, a winner against the enemy. You just got to know the power that you got on the inside. You need to start saying, body, heal yourself. Declare yourself healed in the name of Jesus. It don't matter what it is. Declare yourself healed in the name of Jesus. And if you're in perfect health and you know somebody that's sick, begin to pray for them. Because the power, the anointing is on you to lay hands on the sick. The anointing is on the inside of you to raise the dead. What's in Jesus? What's on Jesus? Is in you and on you. Do you remember when they crucified Jesus? I got to throw him in the, in the mix. The devil thought he had him. He didn't know what he was doing. He thought once he crucified him, that was it. He forgot about Jesus was going to raise himself up in three days. So Jesus allowed his life to be taken from him. But before, they, before he died, they beat him brutal. The flesh was falling off of his bones. His eye sockets was messed up. He was scarred up. He didn't even look like a man. They said the size of his head was twice his size. And he looked like hamburger meat because they had beat him so badly. 
Well, when he died, that's how he went in the grave. But when he got up, before he got up, he went to hell and he took the keys from Satan. So while he was down there three days with Satan doing this for us, his body was still laying there. So when he got through with Satan, he goes back to the grave, lays on his body, rise back up in all glory of God. No scars. He wasn't beaten up. He was healed from the head to his feet. And he got up. Tell somebody just get up. He got up. Tell somebody just get up. He got up. Tell somebody just get up. He got up with all power in his hand. He got up. He got up with all power in his hands. That's the kind of God that you got on the inside of you. So when he left, he said, I can't stay here with y'all. I've been here. I've taught you everything that I could. And I want you to teach every generation, from generation to generation, about the power of the anointing one. Ah. So he said, I got to leave now. He said, but I won't leave you comfortless. That's when the Holy Ghost came in. He had to go back and prepare a place for us. He had to go back to get our house ready. He had to go back to get our neighborhood ready. But he said, I'm going to leave the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Will, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. With all the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is designed to protect you. The Holy Ghost is designed to heal your body. The Holy Ghost is designed to break every yoke. Everything that come against you. Everything that the enemy throws at you. The, the Holy Ghost. The great physician is in the house. I don't know what you need today. In fact, come, come, come here. Come here. Get that anointing oil right over there. Right over there. And I want you to well, no, this is, be safe. Just pour a little bit into everybody's hand that wants it. And when he give you this anointing oil, put it on the, body, on the part of your body that you need God to heal. And when you put it on your body, you need to start saying to God, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. If you don't have faith to believe, keep saying it till you feel it. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I don't care if it's a minor earache, a headache, you got cancer, you got heart, it doesn't matter. You're depressed, you got some emotional issues going on. Your brain is messed up. Whatever is going on, put it on that place and say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm claiming my healing now. I'm claiming my healing now. And even if you're not sick right now, ward off the enemy coming at you in the future. Any disease that try to overtake my body is already dead in the name of Jesus. It can't come near my temple. It can't reside in my temple. It can't take control of my temple because Jesus said that he is the anointed one and he's the healer. I got the healer on the inside of me. Speak life over your body, not death. Stop talking about what's going on, but declare the victory of your healing. Ah, you might have been diagnosed but that don't mean you got it. Hear what I say? The reports might show one thing, but God is saying another thing. Declare your healing. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am healed. Come on, I'm trying to wait on you. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Don't listen to me and watch everybody else. This is for you. You need to be walking in your healing. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy has thrown against me, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Everything that was taken from me, I'm getting it back double. 
I'm getting my money back. I'm getting my friends back. I'm getting my life back. Everything that the enemy has taken from me, I'm getting it all back. Ah! Oh! Oh! In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus.